Well, hello. I'm Andy Warhol, and welcome to The Joy of Painting, 1962 edition. If you uh, enjoyed the theme song, that was from my friends, The Velvet Underground and Nico. The song was called Venus in Furs. I actually did their album cover. It's uh, one of my more famous pieces of art. Let me put that on the screen and show that to you now. As you can see, it's a giant banana. I like painting uh, normal objects, uh, everyday objects. Pop art is to be enjoyed by all, and it's a way for all of us to enjoy the, the normal things in life. You know, art, art is just too hard, and so I don't consider myself an artist at all. You know who else I don't consider an artist is my, my contemporary, Roy Lichtenstein. So I was trying to think of a new way in, of something to, how do I say this? something to paint and I really wanted to paint the comics because the comics are such a modern form of artistic expression and I heard I heard Roy was having a show and I went to Roy's show and it turned out he was painting comic inspired works I have one of them I'm gonna show you right now can we put that up for the people out there there it is isn't it lovely he even got the dots of the comic in there and everything just perfect. But wouldn't you know it, now I can't do it. So anyway, uh, I'm here in the factory trying to come up with something new to paint because now I can't paint comics anymore. <sighs> My factory, as you can see, is 100% silver. I have a friend named Billy Name. Yes, his name is Billy Name. And Billy Name, when I was over visiting him, he had his entire studio covered in tinfoil, and I thought, what a great idea. What a creative idea. So I had Billy come over to my studio here and do mine all in tinfoil. Hence, why everything is silver. I find it so relaxing. It allows me a space to have bands come over like the Velvet Underground, movie stars, other artists and contemporaries. We hang out here at the factory a lot and try to create as much different types of art as we can. My, I myself, besides just being a painter, I'm also a filmmaker. I dabble in music, but I, I mostly consider myself a, a painter and a filmmaker. You, you may have seen some of my movies, but we won't talk about that now. We'll save that for a film class that we'll all take again later. Anyway, I'm working on a new painting now. And, you know, how did this new painting come about? Well, I have a good friend named Muriel, and Muriel, I needed an idea after the Roy Lichtenstein fiasco, and I went to Muriel, and I said, Muriel, I don't know what I'm gonna paint. And she said to me, she goes, well, Andy, she said, paint something that you love and make it that easy. And I thought, wow, what a great suggestion. And what do I love? I love money. So I decided to paint money. And uh, became one of my most famous paintings, simply called Money. Let me show it to you now. And there's my painting, Money. And I've also done other uh, objects that I enjoy, like Coca-Cola. Uh, I painted a famous Coca-Cola bottle in large scale format. Let me show you that painting as well now. Isn't that just lovely? I went a little different with the Coke. It's simply a black and white outline. I decided to go into something a little different. A dear friend, Marilyn Monroe, passed away recently, just a few weeks ago as a matter of fact. And I just finished working on a piece I did for her that I called American, the Marilyn Diptych. In case you're wondering what a diptych is, it's mostly used in religious art. And it is where two paintings are painted on wooden panels and they can be folded together like a book. It's most commonly seen in religious art on, on the altar itself. So I created this uh, work in honor of my uh, beloved Marilyn. Let, let me put that on the screen for you now. So now, as you can see here, the left side has 25 full-colored, brightly colored images of, of Marilyn. The, the picture I decided to use was taken from a promo photo from her movie Niagara. And I just love that photo of her. So I painted it, and then we copied it over and over and over 25 times. Now on the right side, notice how it's all black and white, and it's degrading. So this is meant to, the left side is Marilyn's life, the right side is Marilyn's death. At least that's what the art critics are gonna say about me in 25 years. They don't know. I'm not even sure I know, but it sounds good, right? So anyway, so now I'm working on another new idea. 
So I'm talking to Marilyn. Let me go back to Marilyn. Uh, not Marilyn. Let me go back to Muriel. All my friends seem to have these uh, M names. I don't know. Except for Edie, of course, my beloved Edie, right? Anyway, so I'm talking with Muriel, and, and she told me to paint something that I love. And we've already looked at money. But she said, you know, if you don't want to do something you love, do something very common. Do something every day that every person can relate to. She said, something as simple as a can of Campbell's soup. And I thought, what a brilliant idea is that? Muriel then looks at me and she goes, you know, Andy, you keep asking me for ideas. I want to get paid for the ideas, so you better get your checkbook out. So I got my checkbook out. It's a true story, true story. And I wrote her a check for $50 for the Campbell's soup idea. Can you believe it? So I wrote her the check, and I thought, what a great idea. So the next day, I went to the grocery store, and I'm walking through, and I go to the soup aisle, and I pull out all the cans of Campbell's soup. Campbell's is making 32 different flavors. So I bought one can of every flavor. Oh, speaking of which, got to fix that in there. Okay, so I'm currently trying to finish up the, the first one of my series. So I decided to paint one of each can of flavor of Campbell's soup. So I am making 32 different images of Campbell's soup, uh, one for each flavor. And I'm almost there with it now. I think it's starting to look pretty good. Let me show you how it looks here. Here's my first, here's the first one, tomato. Yes, it is a lot smaller than I think you thought it was going to be. I decided to paint these all on 20 inch uh, by 16 inch canvases. Now that I have the main one finished, what I'm going to do is make 31 other ones. I want all the cans to look very, very much the same, very mechanical. Uh, life is a machine. Our, our, our current society is a machine. Uh, I feel like I'm a, one piece of a machine. My art studio here is called the factory. So I am going to use a process called screen printing. Now screen printing has been around for over a thousand years and it was invented by the ancient Chinese. Um, it, is, it takes an incredible amount of patience and an, and an awful attention to detail to get screen printing correct because here's what I have to do. I will make what is in effect a stencil and I need to make a stencil for each color that I want to use in my work. So I will have a stencil for black, a stencil for red, a stencil for silver, a stencil for the gold. And I will then place the stencil on a canvas. I, I'm, I'm using canvas now. I was thinking about switching to different types of paper, but we'll see where that takes me in my future. But for now, I'm going to use a canvas. And I will lay the stencil, and I will push the colored ink through this stencil onto the, uh, onto the blank canvas. I will have to let that set, and then I will put the next stencil over the top and for its next color and I will layer upon layer upon layer until I, I have the finished work. Now stenciling can be used in, in, a, in a realistic standpoint like I'm doing with the Campbell's because I want my paintings to feel like the factory of Campbell's soup. I wonder if they'll send me any free soup for this. That would be really great. Anyway, I digress. Or you can also use stencils to use different colors like I did with Marilyn. Uh, if you remember, and, and some of my other works will have layer upon layer of different bright colors that create kind of a shadowing effect. So I will push the ink through, let dry, do the next color, and I will do this over and over and over for each of my uh, 32 cans of Campbell's soup. And then I will have to go back in and I will hand paint the individual uh, name of the soup in the middle because I can't make a stencil for each one. So there, that is where I will go in and uh, customize each Campbell's Soup Cam. And when they're done, I expect the gallery that I'm showing them at, I've already spoken with them, they are going to, uh, I told them they can display them any way they want. So what they're going to do is they're going to display them in rows and columns as if they're soup cans displayed on the shelf of your local grocery store. What a great idea. I think that's just a great idea. So that's what's going to be happening next. I can do this. You can do this. Pop art is meant for all of us to do. Because in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. You can quote me on that. So I want you to go out and I want you to try painting what you love and what you see in the everyday world. And I want you to turn that into pop art. And I'm going to go find the next thing that I love and I'm going to turn that into art. I'm, I'm glad you uh, were with me for this episode of The Joy of Painting. My name's been Andy Warhol, and I will see you again soon. Cue the Velvet Underground.